This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. Biggest Nickelback, Nickelback, Nickelback fan, Nickelback ban. But I heard this tune yesterday because Jake, friend of the channel, friend of mine, the channel doesn't have friends, does it? It's just a friend of mine. He's got to do this for a first dance, and I was kind of blown away by this song. It's just a great, simple rock ballad. It's called Never Gonna Be Alone. I'm not going to do the Rick Beato thing and play the whole tune here for you. You, you can find it on YouTube and then come back here if you've never heard it. So I was using the chorus um, progression there in the introduction. I thought what we could do is maybe look at that progression and there's a couple of lessons that I was kind of thinking that we could take from it. Um, but yeah, you know, Nickelback get a lot of stick for working with graphs, etc. And Chad does, he has a cool name. He looks a little bit like Eric Johnson with a goatee. Um, but anyway, I wanted to kind of just break down this chorus because it's kind of cool. What we get is... We're in E major for this, starting on chord 1, and then we go to chord 5, then to chord 4. And that's the progression, mostly. Simple as you like, yeah, one, five, four. And then we go to chord six. And that chord six, because we've been sat in that loop, gives us a really nice touch and a, a really nice kind of lift to the chorus or you know like a, a point of difference now where does that come from so when we talk about relative minors this is one of the areas that i like to use these an awful lot so say you took you you could have any progression um but we got the major chords so you've got three of them in a key and three minor chords now they're all related and that's what we mean with this relative minor thing so if you took your progression um one five Four, we could actually replace any of these with their relative minor and it would sound pretty cool so if we go for we're going to replace the one with the six actually just before I say that so the relationship is that chord one its relative is chord six so I'm going to be talking about chord one as the major chord six is the minor if we got chord four Chord two would be the relative. If we've got the five, chord three would be the relative. So we get E is paired with C sharp minor, a minor third below. A is paired with F sharp minor, a 
minor third below, and B is paired with G sharp minor, a minor third below. Right, so you could get, you could get, you could replace the one with the six. So instead of, you get, or you could replace the uh, four with the two, and you get this. And obviously you could replace the five with the three, so you get. And you see that with, essentially this is the a very similar sounding chord progression, but it could give some variety. So this is a trick that I have used personally, and you hear it oftentimes in a chorus or in a verse, the key to, to most popular music is repetition, but with that as well, you want to keep interest with subtle little um, shifts, especially if you're using like these chord loops. So for instance, yeah, you could take that, like what happens in this song. On the very last repeat, we're going to go to six, five, and like I said, you could take any of those chords and sort of substitute them. It's not like a, a proper kind of jazzy reharmonization. It's just a chord substitution to the relative minor. This would work with basically any progression. And this is a way that I'd encourage you to try to put together your own progressions from someone else's. It works really well with simple progressions as well. So think about um, so something like... So if we had Tears for Fears and the first chord was five, four, five, four, we could replace that with three, two, three, two, or five, two, three, four. this three times and then come away so that's a really good structure to be using for, for writing choruses if you've got a four bar loop and um, we would call like the first repetition a excuse me the second repetition you could also call a b try something different and then a come back to the thing it's like a call this form essentially right and you can use this in your chord progressions and pair this with this idea of changing to a relative minor so just again so we got our a section which is going to be five to four in d major so a g one two three four and again I'm kind of restating that and we could even restate it again so this would be a a a b And we're going to come back to A again. A, A, B, A. Do you see, like, so you can use these relative relationships to kind of bring in a chord substitution which is not going to sound wacky or out there. It's just going to sort of give a little bit of a lift and a little bit of variation to the chorus. It's the thing that I noticed in that Nickelback tune. It's the thing that you can use in your own playing. Just what you need to do is kind of write down your chord progression that you're using, whatever it is, figure out where is home. So for me, like, I can hear that that's in D major. Um, Oh, I guess, let's just think about... It. 
So if we took the outfield your love, D, G, A, one, four, five, one, four, five. We could replace the four, right? Two, three, one, four, five. Or we could go replace the four with the two. One, two, five. Or we could place the one with the six. I think that actually happens in the song anyway. And the other thing you could do is use um, inversions, uh, which also has a really cool sound. So we could use like one. So I'm using first inversions here. D in first inversion, G in first inversion, A in first inversion. So what I could do again, so if we took our very basic uh, progression of one, four, five, on a significant repeat, what I would do to create that variation is use an inversion of chord one, and it would sound like this. So we get um, first repeat. And then I'd repeat that. And again. And now I'm gonna to go to the first inversion. And yeah, so that'd be two ways that I would spice up a chord progression. You think about either replacing the, the major with its relative minor, or you could also use a, a first inversion, especially from chord one to four, that has a really strong sound, so you get. So give those things a try. Uh, hopefully that's vaguely interesting or vaguely useful. Let me know in the comments if it is. Something that I use all the time, I think it might help one or two of you if you're kind of writing music or trying to come up with your own ways to play things. So if you're playing like human nature. You could even notice this in other songs that's already happening as well, right? Um, so I'll catch you in another video soon. Feel free to like and subscribe and thank you for stopping by the channel. Cheers.